our talk of the tape, the road ahead for stocks in the final stretch of the year and, of course, beyond. Let's welcome in Professor Jeremy Siegel of the Wharton School. It's so good to have you back. Let me first wish you a happy new year, healthy one, and I look forward to many conversations with you next year, which will hold what do you think for stocks after this incredible run we've had since November 1st? Yeah, I, I'm still bullish. Uh, I think the setup for next year is very good. I, I you know, I, I said January 1st, and it was a, a, we last January 1st, right before different than consensus that we were going to have 10 to 15 percent. I didn't even expect it to go beyond that. Um, but I think that we could definitely get another 10, 12 percent in 2024. Um, uh, earnings estimates, you know, usually they're too high going out. I think 240 for the S&P might be too low uh, from some of the things that I am seeing and, and what is happening. Um, so I, you know, I see and it's a tale of two markets. I mean, the S&P is, yes, 19 and a half times earnings, but value stocks are 14 and 15 times earnings right now. And if we're going to get that soft landing, which looks increasingly likely, that's a real buy in the market, in my opinion. Well, I feel like the bulls are coming out of the woodwork right now, which is concerning to some. Yeah. Edgar Denny, for example, 12 reasons why stock investors will see the S&P hit 5,400 in 2024. I'm not going to read you all 12, but among them, consumers have purchasing power, housing going to recover, inflation turning out to be transitory, high-tech revolution is boosting productivity. What do you make of that number? 5,400 by the end of next year, 6,000 by the end of 25. Well, that's even a little bit above what I think, but it's it's not impossible. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, I, I've often said that, you know, a lot of people think 15, 16 is the right P.E. ratio for the market. I've often said it's 19 or 20. Um, and if we're going to get a good earnings coming in next year and 2025, you know, enthusiasm can definitely bring this market a lot higher. I mean, the whole implication here, is it not, is that the Fed pulls this off. We have the soft landing. The Fed cuts multiple times, maybe a handful, because it can, not because it has to, because inflation's come down closer to target. And then Jay Powell feels, the Fed chair, uh, feels comfortable enough that they can cut rates because inflation's come down close enough to target. Yeah, and, and it, it should cut rates because as inflation goes down, you don't want the real rate which is the uh, rate they said at Fed funds minus inflation to keep on going up. Uh, so you need just to keep the same stance of, of tightness, you would want it to go down. And by the way, I think a lot of people say, you know, oh, the only reason the market could go up is if the Fed actually lowers, uh, you know, tremendously. That's not right. What, what was bullish about Jay Powell's December Fed meeting was showing flexibility, saying, listen, if I see a slowdown, I'm lowering rates, because the last thing you want to happen is him to be as stubborn on the way down as he was on the way up two oh. years ago. And I think that it's more than whether he lowers rates or not, but he's prepared to lower rates. That is what I think is the great comfort level of the market. The Fed in a way, has the economies back in 2024 uh, in a way that you weren't so sure of, uh, let's say, three or six months ago.